We've spent a few years talking to people who lead on mental health initiatives in the workplace, and we know how much pressure and responsibility comes packaged with mental health. I'm worried I'll get it wrong. I feel a bit helpless and I'm worried staff will be signed off. What if no one uses these services? I'm stressed and confused about what the right thing is to do. How do I know if employees are just taking the piss? We hear this a lot, and even when we don't hear it, we know this is probably the internal monologue that runs through your head, like a train stuck on loop. On the flip side of that, we know exactly what you're trying to achieve, no matter how hard it feels to get there. We know you want it to feel different and to have a solution that works. We know that you want to bring about real cultural change, to make sure that employees are getting the support that they truly need, and that they don't need to be signed off because of stress or burnout. And more than anything, you just want a happy workforce who genuinely wants to come into work every day. Often though, senior leadership buy-in and stigma stands in the way of this. And while there's no silver bullet cure or quick fix for this, there are some steps you can take to get started. Starting a proactive mental health strategy. There's a reason flight attendants tell people to put on their own oxygen masks before helping someone else. You can't care for others if you aren't caring for yourself. Start by telling someone how you feel leading on the mental health initiatives within the workplace. How are you finding it? What are you struggling with? What could you use support on? How do you genuinely feel about it? Maybe it's quite inspired or motivated. You could be overwhelmed, stressed, or a combination of everything above. But it's important that you voice where you're at. Building the business case for mental health. There are two parts to a business case that you can build. First, use the research and reports that already exist out in the public. A recent report from Deloitte found that for every one pound a business invests in mental health initiatives, they'll see an average of five pound returned. Alongside that, it found that the cost per employee for poor mental health is £2,277 in London. Then, if we bring those stats a little closer to home, we can relate them back to your business. For example, if you're a 400-person business based in London, then the cost for your organisation of poor mental health is £910,800 per year. What are your retention rates like? The UK average turnover rate is 15%. Are you below or above that? It costs on average £30,000 to replace an employee. So if you're above those retention rates, well, we'll let you work out the cost to your business. What are people saying in job interviews or exit interviews about your benefits package? Are people taking lots of sick days? Do you have an employee engagement survey that's scoring pretty low? If you can find any qualitative or quantitative data or feedback on those areas, then you're already on your way to building a pretty strong business case for the need for mental health investment. Here's a list of people that are operating in the mental health, well-being, or employee engagement space that might be able to help you on your journey. Sanctus, I mean, we can't not mention ourselves. Unmind, Calm, Headspace, Spill, Self Space, Pecon, Culture Amp, Office Vibe, Perk Box, Mental Health First Aid England, and of course, our directory. In there, there's a list of free and paid services for people's mental health.